How soon does the train leave for Camp Carver? Uh, 16 minutes and 22 seconds. Uh, sir. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Pardon me, young man. We have a day stopover in San Diego. Do you happen to know if the Palomar Observatory is open to the public? Uh, yes, ma'am. Three days a week, 1 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. There, you see, I told you. I was afraid of that. And I still want to go fishing. How do we get to Pine Lake? Oh, you take the limited 435 track 9, change at Benton, and get on the narrow gauge to B&R. Arrive Pine Lake, 1134, elevation 5,643 feet, maximum temperature now 86, minimum 61. How are the accommodations? Oh, splendid, sir. The fishing is excellent. The lake is well stocked with Salmo aridius, Salmo faria, and Salvolinus fontanellus, uh, commonly known as rainbow, German brown, and eastern brook trout. Record catch to date, 10 pounds, 4 ounces, Salmo aridius by Joseph E. Dalton of Austin, Texas. Yeah? Hear that, Ma? Ten pounds, four ounces. Oh, but Roy, we can go fishing any time. We just can't miss seeing the Palomar Telescope. Why, it's famous. It's the biggest one in the United States. Pardon me, madam, it's the largest in the world. Think of that, Roy. Why, they can probably see thousands and thousands of miles. Now, Ma, don't go overboard. <laughs> That's a lot of miles to see through a telescope. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. I think the lady is a little too conservative. Actually, this scope has a penetration of 6,000 billion billion miles of stellar space. 6,000 billion? Well, according to Professor Oakeshott, one light year equals 6 million million miles. It's an astronomical unit of measure, like, for instance, uh, a parsec. Parsec? Yes, parsec. Whatever that is, we're going to see it. Thank you, young man. You're quite welcome. Well, it's a very informative book you got there, young man. I'd like to get hold of a copy. Oh, I'm quite sure you already have one, sir. I have? Yes, sir. It's the Army Field Officer's Manual. But uh, all that information, uh, obviously, it didn't come from this. Oh, no, sir. Those were just some things I happened to read and remembered, that's all. Oh! You mean those facts and figures were all memorized? Oh, yes, sir. They tell me that because of an overdevelopment in the retentive tract of my cerebral hemispheres, it is impossible for me to forget anything I read, see, or hear. Why, well, it's remarkable. Of course, I'd heard there were such things as photographic minds, but I'd never met one face to face before. You see, I was a sergeant in the last war. Oh? I was just brushing up on this new manual. I like to keep up with the times. Oh, so you're interested in military matters then? Eh? Oh, yes, sir. There's nothing like the Army, sir. I'm glad you approve of it. I've been following the Army's progress since the last war, sir, and I find it extremely interesting. Why, it's amazing at the strides they've made in these last few years. You, of course, will recall the date in the old field officer's manual on page 22, section 4, paragraph 2, which deals with the firing power of the infantry platoon. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Page 22, paragraph 2. Yeah, oh, yes, indeed, yes. Why, on page 30, section 2, paragraph 6 of the field officer's manual, I... Oh, excuse me, sir. I, here I am telling you all this, and you know <laughs> about the Army. <laughs> A little. I'm sorry, sir. I guess I just sort of got carried away, sir. That's quite all right. <laughs> Colonel Lockwood. Uh. Major Gillis and Major Ross meets compliments, sir. Would the Colonel care to join them in car 101, section 5, for the trip back to camp? Oh, very good. Thank you very much, Sergeant. 
Oh, by the way, uh, you see that a copy of the new field officer's manual is on my desk the first thing tomorrow morning. Oh, yes, sir. Well, goodbye, young man. And if you ever decide to come back into the service, look me up. Colonel Lockwood, Horace P. Lockwood. Well, thank you, sir. I, I certainly will. What got into the old man? He acted almost human. Human? Oh, he seemed like an awfully nice person. Oh, nice enough. Until something goes wrong. <laughs> then his old man rules and regulations in person. Discipline with a capital D. Well, oh, that's what makes the army tick. Well, you can't overdo it. You should hear him when I'm behind in my work. He barks like a seal. Oh, that's the army for you. You've got to be on your toes. Oh, not in my department. I'm a typist. <sighs> <laughs> well, so long. If you ever go back in the service, look me up. Sergeant Hopper. Sergeant Peggy P. Hopper. <laughs> Thanks. I, I sure will. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right up, folks. I just have a few enlistments left. They're going fast, and you don't want to be left behind. Step right into my parlor, said the spider. I mean, don't be bashful. What I mean is, boys, there's no business like army business. Now tell me, are there any questions? Yeah, what time do they make you get up in the morning? Why, son, I'd like to answer that question, but it's a military secret. Are there any other questions? Well, how many hours a day do you have to work? Work? Oh, <laughs> work, he says. <laughs> Why, son, you're just a little mixed up. This is the army we're talking about. Now let me put you straight. You know, I sort of think of the army as a place of a home, away from home. As a sort of a cook's tour, deluxe. Sounds like a lot of tapioca to me. Does he think he's kidding? You say you're not satisfied? You say you want more. You want good pay. You want good food. You want a life of ease? Join the army. You want, you want to travel? You want to see the world? Join the army. Now let me tell you, boys, there's nothing like travel to wise you up. Take a look at me. Before I joined the army, I was a big, dumb ox. Yeah, I can believe that. Now you, now you, son. You look like just the kind of a man that would suit army life to a T. You know, I can see you with nothing to do, sitting under the palms on the beach at Waikiki, strumming a ukulele. I hate ukuleles. I like ukuleles, huh? You know, I can sort of picture you as a Bo Brummel of the army, a Bo Brummel. I can see you sitting, sitting on a sidewalk cafe in gay old Paris, sipping wine with a mademoiselle on either knee. That's the kind of an army I'm talking about. I don't like dames. Wine gives me a bellyache. Oh. Ames! Ames! Oh, no. That voice, it can't be. It is. It's the thing. Ames, I haven't seen you since we split up in Tokyo in 45. How have you been? Up until now, I've been fine. Look, you go and play with your yo-yo, will you? And leave me alone. I'm a busy man. Oh, I, I understand that, Ames, but, but I've been listening. And you've overlooked one very important point. The only important point I've overlooked is the point that your head comes to. Now beat it! But, Ames, you've been misleading these men. You know the Army isn't all fun and play. Why, the Army's a great institution. It offers opportunities for education and, and advancement. And Shut up! Who's doing the recruiting around here, you or me? But, fellas, it's true. Why, going to the Army today is like going to college. Why, today the Army offers more than ever in history, more opportunities for advancement and practical training. Why, if you qualify, you can move right into officer's candidate school. With hard work and application, you'll be wearing lieutenant's bars in no time at all. Now, maybe you're interested in mechanics. You can learn all about it in the motorized or armored service. Hey, that's for me. I'm nuts about machinery. I think I'll give it a whirl. Why, just think of the interesting field of electronics and radar. Why, there's no telling how far a man can go if he studies hard. You mean they teach you the radar and electronic stuff for free? Oh, better than that. They not only teach you, but they feed, clothe, and pay you while you learn. What are we waiting for? I tell you men, the opportunities in the Army are under... <laughs> What are you trying to do? Make a sap out of me? Apes, I, I was only... Shut up! Help! You two-legged encyclopedia. Ever since I've first known you, you've been a pain in the neck to me. 
When you joined the army, you got me into hot water and you kept me in hot water all through the duration. Ames, it wasn't right. You know, if I live to be a thousand, I'll never forget the first day you came to camp. You hadn't even got your uniform yet. You were strutting around like a colonel, telling the officers their business. Page one, paragraph this. Come on, fellas, we're here. Snap into it. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. All present accounted for, sir. Come on, fellas, line up. The first thing you have to learn in the army is discipline. According to paragraph... Listen, you draft board's greatest blunder. You haven't drawn your uniform yet, and you want to play colonel. I give the orders around here. Get back in line. But, sir, I was just trying to help. Shut up! All right, men. Line up in two ranks. In case you don't know, that means one behind the other. In the army now. It's a great army, but you've got a lot to learn. Hey, you. Come in. Before you can give orders around here, you gotta wear these. To get these, it takes years and years of hard work and experience. The way you've been popping off around here, you'd think you knew everything about this man's army. Oh, but Sergeant, I... Quiet! Now, if it wouldn't strain your mental capacities too much, and you could remember which is your right side, I'd like to have you right face. Forward, hands. One, two, three, four. All right, men. Take it those stomachs. Stop. No detail. Halt. You're out of step, Sergeant. to this man a moment, sir. What is the equipment of the infantry in action? Field Service Regulations, Chapter 2, page 6, paragraph 24. The principal offensive weapons are the machine gun, the rifle, a bayonet, its mortars, and... That'll do. Has Captain Ross Mead seen this man? Not yet. Call the captain. Yes, sir. I'd like you to question this man, Captain. He seems well-versed in Army regulations. To find a theater of war. Field Service Regulations, Chapter 1, page 4, paragraph 14. The theater of war comprises those areas of land and sea which are or may become directly involved in the operations of war. May I have the Captain's permission to borrow a rifle? Soldier, give this man your gun. At ease. Attention. Boy. Arm. Left shoulder. Arm. Right shoulder. Arm. Right face. Left face. About face. About face. Foot. Arm. Inspection. Arms. Order. Arms. 
Parade, rest. Are you a good marksman? I don't know, sir. I never handled a gun before. I practiced with a mop. Forward, march! Forward, march! That is an incorrect command, sir. A soldier cannot respond to the order of forward march from the position of parade rest. Can you recite the duties of a sergeant? Yes, sir, but I haven't time. What do you mean, you haven't time? Officer's call sounded five minutes ago, sir. You'll be late. He's good material. Send him to an uncom school. Carry on, Caldwell. And that's why I practically won the war single-handed. Just to get it over with. Just to get you out of the army. To comb you out of my hair. Now beat it, will you? I got some recruiting to do. Gee, Ames, I'm sorry, because I've decided to re-enlist. What? Over my mutilated carcass, you'll re-enlist. My mind's made up, Ames. I guess I got so enthusiastic telling the men about the army that I sold myself. What? Wait a minute. Don't you go in there. This army ain't big enough for the both of us, and that's that. Now scram. But, but Ames, you've got to let me re-enlist. You'll be guilty of dereliction of duty if you don't. And according to the Articles of War, page 224, Article 96, such dereliction will be taken cognizance of by a summary, special, or general courts martial and punished according to the nature and degree of the offense. Shut up! Ames! Yes, sir. What's the meaning of this farce? Farce, sir? What would you call it? A recruiting sergeant that won't recruit. Sign this man up at once. Oh, but, Captain, I can't. You see, he's got bad eyes, he's got flat feet, and, well, frankly, Captain, I don't understand what's holding him up. But, Ames, I just had a complete checkup a few days ago. Cardiograph, basal metabolism, hemoglobin. I'm right in the pink. Medical diagnosis is not part of the recruiting service, Ames. Yes, sir. I was listening to your rosy and flowery description of Army life. You were, Captain? Good stuff, don't you think? I've got news for you, Ames. No. Oh. It seems to me your unusual talents are being wasted here in the recruiting office. Uh, you do, sir? Yes, yes. Don't you think a man with your high animal spirits and uh, unusual energy uh, should be back on the drilling grounds? But, Captain... I recommend that you be returned to line duty. Line duty? Yes, but don't misunderstand me. It's not, it's not a demotion. Oh, It's thanks. just to see that you keep physically fit for your wine, women, and ukulele playing. Yes, sir. Now, you report to camp by Reveille in the morning. Yes, sir. Why is it? Every time I bump into you, something always happens to me. Either I lose my stripes or I get thrown in the garden. Oh, but Ames, it was your own... Shut up! Here I put in 15 years of blood, sweat, toil, and tears just to get myself a nice, soft, coffee-cooling job. Nothing to do. No revelry. No squads left. No squads right. Then the very first day, I bump into you, and what happens? I get thrown back to line duty. What? No! Brain? Uh, here. Jansen? Yeah. Miller? That's me. All present are accounted for, Sergeant. All right, on your feet. Now get this, men. You're in the Army. Obedience is the first thing you learn. So we're starting right now. Stand up straight. Throw the shoulders back. Make like your soldiers remember. Till you get to camp, this man's in charge, and don't give him no bad time, or you'll hear from me. That's all. What was that? Say, Chum, was that a general? No, that was a sergeant. A sergeant? So that's a sergeant. Say, uh, outside of making the police force afraid to go out nights, what else does a sergeant do? Well, they, they sort of run things, give orders. Give orders? You mean we got to take orders from that character? That's right. Oh, oh, no. That's murder. I couldn't take it. I'm sorry, fellas. I'm reasoning. No, 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 wait a minute. That is, you have to take orders until you get sergeant stripes of your own. Huh? Come again? 
Well, I mean, if you become a sergeant, why then you give the orders. You mean guys like us can learn to be sergeants and talk like a foghorn and, and boss people around? Why, certainly, if you work hard and apply yourselves. Oh, boy, that's a job for me. Now, get this, men. You're in the Army. Make like soldiers, blah, blah, blah. Wow, what a sergeant I'd make. <laughs> hey, pal, you were a sergeant, weren't you? That's right. Well, well, give us a scoop. What do we have to do to get like that? Well, first, you have to complete your basic training. Mm -hmm. Infantry drill, uh, manual of arms. Yeah, yeah, but what's the first thing we got to do? Well, first, you have to learn the position of a soldier. Oh, what's that? Uh, the position of a soldier at attention, according to Infantry Drill Regulations, page 8, section 2, paragraph 16, A, heels on the same line and as close to each other as the conformation of the man permits. B, turn your feet out equally, forming an angle of 45 degrees. C, keep your knees straight without stiffness. Hmm. Mm, how, hey. am I, how am I doing? How does that look? you guys. Don't you know the meaning of the word halt? When I tell you to stop, I want you to stop right now. Not ten minutes from now, not two weeks from now, and not two months from now, but right now. When I tell you to halt, I want you to stop right there and don't move a whisker. You understand? Now, just in case some of you might understand the King's English, I want you to about face you guys. Are you trying to be ballet dancers? When I say pick them up, I don't mean pick them up. I mean don't drag them. Having trouble, Sergeant? Oh. Attention! It's a conspiracy, Captain. It's a plot to drive me crazy. Why, they're doing it on purpose. They do Who it. does what? The draft board, sir. All they do is sit down all day long at their desk. What do they do? They search all through their articles, all through their papers, all through everything they can, just to find every knucklehead and imbecile that they can, and they expect me to make soldiers out of them. Well, it doesn't seem to me that these inductees are any different from the rest. They're hopeless, sir. As you were, men. Well, don't stand there like wooden Indians. You heard what the captain said. At ease! You see what I mean, Captain? Ames, it seems to me that the more simple, silent, understanding method would get you better results. Oh, no, Captain. You can't train these inductees that way. You've got to sweat the stupidity out of them and jam the fundamentals right down their throats. So far, it doesn't seem to be paying off. Now, I suggest that you use more gentle methods. Carry on. Yes, sir. All right! <laughs> Ten. Shun. Left. Eight. That's right. Dress. <laughs> Pull in those middles. Front and back. Straighten up that line. Straighten up that line, men. All right, straighten up the line, men. Fall out and take a look at that line! Oh! Oh, 
captain. You see what I mean? These draftees are driving me crazy. Yes, I see what you mean, Ames. Now pull yourself together and. Reporting for duty, sir. I think you'll find this roster correct. Who, who are these men? Well, they just joined up, sir. Sergeant Monahan sort of put me in charge temporarily. They're all ex-service men, I suppose. No, that's... not me. He's the only ex-service man in the bunch, sir. Wait a minute. I don't understand this. You men from the ROTC? Military school? I was well, me, I don't know school. I've never been. But your marks like seasoned veterans. The little guy showed us how. You showed them how? Now tell me, how and when did this happen? We practiced on the train, sir. Well, that makes it very... You what? That does it. Quiet! Yes, sir. You practiced on the train? Yes, sir. It was a little crowded in the aisles, sir. In the aisles? And it was rather difficult rounding the curves, sir. Now, just a minute. How could you take a bunch of new recruits and make a march like this? On a train? Well, yes, sir. They were very eager to learn, and they sort of asked me to help them out, so I just taught them the fundamentals, and they took it from there. Tell me, did you have to sweat the stupidity out of them and jam the fundamentals down their throats? Why, no, I, I don't understand, sir. Well, skip it. We understand, don't we, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's your name? Ex-Sergeant Dorian Doubleday, sir. Doubleday, huh? Oh, yes. Company F, that's my company. Oh, Colonel Lockwood, sir. Yes? Yes? I, I beg your pardon, sir, but you told me to look you up if I ever got back in the Army again. Who are you? Well, I was the information clerk at the railway station. That's where I met you about a week ago. Oh, yes. Oh, most unusual man, Captain. He remembers everything that he reads, sees, or hears. Well, he actually memorized the Encyclopedia Britannica. What, sir? He... he mem... Is that possible? Yes, sir. And sometimes it's rather confusing to have so many unrelated facts in one's mind. Such as, well, that July was named in honor of Julius Caesar, and that the cross was called the Gataway by the Indians, and is the oldest organized American sport, and that the Latin word for the New Zealand Kiwi is Apertix Mantilli. Apertix Mantilli. This is astounding. He ought to be quite an asset to the Army, Captain. Well, carry on. Thank you, sir. That's what I mean, sir. He can keep that up all day. He'll drive you... Quiet, Sergeant Ames. Yes, sir. Now, you take these men to the quartermasters and see that they're issued their uniforms. Yes, sir. So... You're now polishing apples for the colonel, huh? What do you want him to do? Resign so that you can get his job? Oh, no, Ames. I, I just want to get my sergeant stripes back again. Well, let me straighten you out, bud. I'll personally see that you don't. Fire! Hush! Gee, Ames, it sure is great to be back in the Army again. Just a minute. You got a lot of crust getting yourself assigned to my company. But Ains, I had nothing to do with it. And besides, we're wasting time. We've got to get to the quartermasters. You've been reactivated. Take them yourself. How do I get there? Well, I'll tell you, you go... You go right straight ahead. Make a right-hand turn right through the gate. That'll get you there. Thanks, Ames. Ains, hut! Wait!
Uh, begging the captain's pardon, sir, but there's a rumpus in the whack area, sir. What is it, Sergeant? Well, I don't know, Captain, but would the captain care to investigate, sir? Very well. Come with me. There are uh, no recruits, sir. I mean, ma'am. This is outrageous. Are you in charge here? I guess so, sir. I, I mean, Captain. Guess so? Don't you know? Oh, I mean, that is, in, in a way. What do you mean, in a way? I mean, uh, sort of. Are you in charge? Yes or no? Well, yes and no. I, I mean... Uh, that is enough. I, I, uh, you won't double-talk your way out of this. Sergeant, Corporal, arrest this man. Captain, I'm, I'm sure there was no harm meant. Did you see these men enter the locker room? Yes, that is all. You may go. Anything wrong, Captain? Wrong? I should think so. These men were detected coming from the wax quarters. What? <laughs> I've had this man arrested. He was in charge. That's a very serious offense. This could lead to a court-martial, couldn't it, Captain? Captain, I insist that these men be severely punished. I'll take over, Captain. I'll see that these men are properly disciplined. Thank you, Captain. Dismissed? You men have just violated the most rigid regulation in this camp. The Colonel's not going to be happy about this, Captain. The Colonel's very strict about that rule. Oh, yes, sir. Very strict. That leaves me no alternative, men, than to put you in the guardhouse pending further investigation. Sergeant? Yes, sir? Put these men under arrest. Yes, sir. With pleasure, sir. Uh, begging the Captain's pardon, sir, but these men are not subject to arrest. What's that? Uh, no, sir. I'm to blame. You see, according to the Articles of War... Why had I know all about the Articles of War? I, I know that, sir, but I still maintain that I alone am subject to punishment. I can arrange that, I assure you. Captain, if punks like this are allowed to run around loose, the Army will get a bad name, sir. Quiet! Now that I think of it, how did you happen to be in the woman's locker room? Huh? M me, sir? Why, why, why I... Yes, you. How did all these men get in there? You were in charge of them. Mm -hmm. Well, sir, you see, Captain, I, uh, well, uh, well Sergeant, I... I believe that these draftees have driven you crazy. You were told to take them to the quartermasters, and they end up in the wax locker room. Now, how did that happen? Well, Captain, I, I guess I, uh, I guess I, I just turned my back for a second. Sergeant Ames? Confine yourself to camp. You'll be restricted for 30 days. Now, you take these men back to the quartermasters and no detours. <laughs> yes, sir. So... You did it again, didn't you? First, you get me fired for my recruiting job. Now, you ain't been back in the Army ten minutes when you get me confined to camp for the next 30 days. Why, you little prisoner! You run out of yogurt or something? Nah, this man's army. It ain't what it used to be. Can't make a joke anymore without being confined to camp. Well, you better get your quarters in order. We got a new top kick, and he's making the rounds right now. Barracks inspection, bed check, the whole works. Yeah? Gee, thanks. All right, 
you guys. What is this? An army barracks or a hog house? Come on, you gold brick and scissor bills. Agitate them brooms. Hey, yo, soldier. What do you got? A broken arm? Come on, get to work. Get to work. All right, you guys. Come on, let's police up this chicken coop. Hey, we got that paper. Get those shoes off the floor, soldier. Smooth out those beds. Straighten up those pillows. Well, what do you know? We got a hero with us. When was you decorated, soldier? Decorated? Get that medal out of sight. Hmm. Well, that looks pretty good. All right, you guys, get rid of those brooms. Now, all of you get your jackets on. Come on, button them up, hurry up, hurry up. Regulation. Now, listen to me. When I give the order, I want you to snap into attention like you meant it. Let's show the new top kick that we're soldiers, not a bunch of hillbillies at a fish fry. Hey, Sarge, here's the new top. Ten, jump! Attention. Not bad. Not bad at all. Sergeant, I don't like that tobacco on the footlocker. That's all, brother! I've had enough of this story! The new... Hey, you! A cop sergeant! I can't take it any longer! Hey, hey, I'm going crazy! I don't care! Control yourself! Let me go to jail! I can't eat anything! Stop taking any medicine! Control take it so easy! I'm going crazy! Sergeant Ames. Yes, sir. Have you lost your mind? I don't think so, sir. You'll replace everything in this barracks the way it's supposed to be. Yes, sir. To the last feather. Yes, sir. You'll add 10 days to your period of confinement. Yes, sir. I suggest, Sergeant, that you report to the infirmary for a checkup. Oh, I feel all right, sir. A mental checkup. Oh. Yes, sir. As you were, men. It's the wax 
locker room again. Huh? Oh, no. Into this mess. We're trapped. The joint's just crawling with wax. This is awful. No, that ain't good. And me, me just two jumps ahead of a court martial. Well, there's one thing you don't have to worry about. You won't have to take any more orders from me. If they ever catch me in here again, I'm sure to lose my stripes. There you go. Thinking about yourself. What about my stripes? There's only one thing to do. Yeah, what's that? Turn ourselves in. Are you nuts? It's the only way. What? My mind's made up. No. We're buddies, ain't we? After all we've been through. I'm your pal. Pal? Yeah. Look, kid. Why should we take a rap for something that ain't our fault? Well... But according to the Articles of War, page 242, Articles... Article smart -ical. Look, you got us into this mess, didn't you? Well, because I like you, I'll get us out of it. How? I don't know. But don't worry, I'll think I'll of something. Find. I'm the devil. What are you doing in here again? Well, you see, it's a long story. Yeah, we're, we're sort of in a jam. An understatement if I ever heard one. What's so habit-forming about this locker room? Oh, we just got in here by accident. <laughs> yeah, we came in with the laundry. Oh, yeah, it's, it's true. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, we're, we're, we're victims of... What are we victims of? Circumstance. Yeah, that's right. Circumstance. First we were in the truck, then we were in here. Smack, just like that. Well, of course, it's my duty to report you. Oh. But I won't. I believe you. Nobody would stick his neck out twice like this if he could help it. Gee, Sarge, you'll help us out? Well, I should have my head examined. But go ahead. What's the deal? Oh, Sarge, you're a doll. I could kiss you. Oh, don't get carried away, Sarge. It's as good a time as any. I'm due in the Colonel's office in five minutes, so you're on your own now. Good luck. Ames will never get away with it. It's a cinch. Just do like I do. Come on.
been awfully nice meeting you. The pleasure is mutual, I'm assured. That was too close, Ainge. We'd better give ourselves up. Nothing doing. I said I'd get us out of here, and I will. Outside! On the double. We're going to the medical corps. Complete physical exams, just routine. Halt! You two, fall in. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma This is a break. I don't like it, Ames. I don't like it. Quit worrying. As long as we stick with these wax, we'll be okay. All right, girls, get out of those uniforms. Hurry it up. You two, you're new, aren't you? Uh, yes, ma'am. We just arrived in camp today. Names? Uh, Private Barbara Smith, ma'am. Private? I mean, uh, Sergeant Pamela McGuire. Pam for short, ma'am. Skip the nicknames. You're just McGuire to me. Come with me. Headquarters needs two filing clerks at once. <laughs> Mason's white army is going to dig in back of this hill, 16. Oh, that'll put our blue army in a pretty bad position, won't it, sir? Unless we take the hill. That's quite a problem. Mason's foxy. Good soldier. Yeah, it looks as if we've been outmaneuvered. Well, that's first call, sir. Shall I check the men and equipment? Yes, thank you. Please do. Thank you, sir. The extra filing clerks are here, sir. Oh, thank you. Have a report to Sergeant Harper for instructions. Yes, sir. Are you boys insane? Why'd you come here? We couldn't help ourselves. You've got to get out quick. I'll fly. No, just march out. He's so busy with those war games, he'll never notice you're gone. Yeah. Come on, kid. See you in Leavenworth. What's the meaning of this? Well, sir, you, you, you see, sir, it's a it, it's a long story, sir. Well, make it a short one. Go ahead, explain yourselves. Well, sir, you see, sir, uh, Sergeant Doubleday and myself. Uh, that's Sergeant Doubleday, sir. Well, uh, we we put these clothes on, sir. I know that, but why? Well, uh, well, sir, that's the uh, that's the long story I was going to tell you about, sir. Well, well, let's hear it. 
Well, sir, you see, the, uh, the, the, truck was, uh, uh, the truck went through the window, and the laundry went around the corner, sir. Will you stop this gibberish and say something that makes sense? Uh, begging the Colonel's pardon, sir, perhaps I can explain. If you'd be so kind. Uh, well, sir, uh, we took the liberty of... Um... Well, yes, sir, we took the liberty of... Yes, go on. You took the liberty of what? Uh, yeah, well, we took the... What did we take the liberty of? Uh, well, sir, we took the liberty of conducting an experiment in the interest of the Army, of course. Hmm. Interest of the Army, eh? Go on. Yes, sir. Uh, the Colonel, of course, is aware of the damaging results affected by enemy infiltration during the recent campaign. Of course. Continue, please. Well, sir, Sergeant Ames and I decided to test the feasibility of commandos and other combat units infiltrating enemy lines disguised as women. Oh, oh yes, sir, disguised as women. Uh, in the interest of the Army, sir. Commandos, disguised as women, as uniform wax, perhaps, eh? Well, it's legal, lawful warfare. Oh, yes, sir. Very lawful and, and legal, too, sir. Uh, the Colonel naturally will recall the Trojan horse incident in 1200 BC, in which the Greeks defeated the Romans in the most brilliant example of infiltration of all time. What's that got to do with it? Everybody knows that. Oh, I know, sir, but in the year 242 B.C., during the Punic Wars, Hamilcar Barca, by use of infiltration tactics, defeated a vastly superior force of Romans. Barca. Barca. Your voice has a familiar ring to it. Haven't I seen you before? Well, we had a very brief talk, sir, at the information desk at the railway station in town. And also... Oh, yes, you're the young man with the photographic mind who remembers everything. That's right, sir. And I haven't forgotten you asked me to look you up if I ever got back in the service, sir. Oh, yes, I remember. Well, this puts the matter in a different light. Knowing your background, of course, this thing begins to make sense. Oh, yes, sir. Makes sense, sir, yes. yes. Yeah. Well, I'm a reasonable man. I hope a just one. As long as you've broken no regulations, or have you? Oh, no, sir. No, no, sir. N no. Are these men? Sit down. Thank you, sir. Smoke? No. Oh, thank you very much, Colonel. Thank you. It's very nice. Thank you, sir. Now, suppose you tell me more about this, uh, Hamilcar Barca. <coughs> well, sir, Hamilcar Barca was an avid exponent and master of infiltrating tactics and guerrilla warfare. So, uh... Um, According to Barker, we should make a, a feint with our main force here. Yeah? Yes, sir. The situation is exactly that which faced Hamilton Barker when he took Mount Pellegrino from the Romans in 247 B.C. Sort of a false frontal attack. Yes, sir, followed yeah. by a flanking attack on either side of the hill. Or in the case of Barker, uh, Mount Pellegrino. Yeah. Then we'll have the White Army outflanked and outtanked. <laughs> you know, this Hamilcar Barker had more deception than the illustrious Hannibal. Oh, begging the Colonel's pardon, sir, but uh, Hannibal learned the art of warfare from his father. His father? Yes, sir, you see, Hannibal was Hamilcar Barca's son. Oh, no wonder he knew all the tricks. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Barca had reduced infiltration to an absolute science. On one occasion, he dressed his men as pe <coughs> peasants. Sorry this had to happen, sir. What is it, Captain? I can explain, sir. I can't account for Doubleday's actions, but I have reason to believe that Sergeant Ames has become mentally unbalanced. Now, just a moment, Captain. I'm busy. Go on, Sergeant. Uh, as I was saying, sir, uh, Barker, on one occasion, dressed uh, his men as women peasants concealing weapons under their loose garments. Begging the Colonel's pardon, sir, but I found these men's uniforms in the women's locker room, in Sergeant Harper's locker. Well, Harper? I have nothing to say. This is a serious matter, Harper. She didn't have a thing to do with it, sir. We put them in there. You put them in there? And those uniforms were stolen. You admit that you were in the women's locker room? Uh, yes, sir. For the second time in the last few days. What? The second time? You men knew the rules of this camp. That's what I've been trying to tell you, sir. I'll handle this, Captain. I must prefer formal charges against these men, sir, and ask for a court-martial. Very well. Captain, you'll preside. Set a date for a hearing. Yes, sir. 
Put these men in the guardhouse and keep them there until further notice. Yes, sir. All right, you men, follow me. Harper, think hard. Uh, don't you remember what that young man said about the infantry movement? It was uh, in here somewhere. You know, the, the surprise element. I'm sorry, sir. There was so much confusion, I... I... Uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, Harper, call the guardhouse and have those two men brought back. Yes, sir. Colonel Lockwood's office. Connect me with the guardhouse. Oh, Doubleday, I want to ask you one thing. Yes, sir? That information you gave me about Hamilcar Barker, was it true? Oh, yes, sir. If the Colonel will refer to Professor Hugo Vorbeck's book on ancient military tactics, you will find a comprehensive treatment of Barker's military... I have no time to be looking up books. The maneuvers start in 20 minutes. I'm sorry, sir. But you remember the contents of the book. Word for word, sir. That's all I want to know. A guard, I'll be responsible for these men. You're dismissed. Uh, Harper, be sure you have your notebook with you. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, Captain, I have some new evidence to present at the court-martial. I won't be satisfied until the Colonel sends those two to, to Leavenworth. Don't worry, Captain. He'll throw the book at them and more. Why, the least they can expect is... Dead hut! Ames, you drive. Yes, sir. Uh, get in, son. Oh, Colonel! Regarding this court-martial... Case dismissed. Drive on. 